Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like our videos, subscribe and press the bell icon for any notifications of new videos that are up and coming. Today I'm talking about bass lines. Um, what bass line to use for what application as well as braided lines. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna talk about one of the easiest ones, braided lines. Okay, there is several different variations. You get 12X, 8X, 4X, 2X. Why do you say should we use an 8X? versus, for instance, a 2X or 4X. An 8X is basically a much tighter weave. It's much smoother. Um, generally, it's a lot thinner as well. The more you go down to 2X, 4X, the more abrasive resistance the line becomes. In other words, the harder the braid is, okay, um, compared to an 8X or a 12X. Um, 2X is our sun line, which is a frogging line. Why a abrasive resistant line over a smooth line for bass fishing? Well, the main reason is you're fishing in structure. So you need a very abrasive resistant line. Hence our FX2, which is most probably one of the most abrasive resistant uh, braids on the market. Um, what it allows you to do, because it's a harder line, is to throw, again, more accurately. It is also there as far as pitching into lily pads. As you pitch into the lily pad, obviously the, the braid is gonna go over the lily pads. When you get your bite and you actually set, what you do is you actually cut the actual um, structure. For instance, the lily pad, if you're fishing over logs, it will wear a lot better. It's more abrasive resistant than a fine, soft, supple braid line. Okay, so frogging line, FX2. More abrasive resistant, also excellent for pitching. Guys, just remember that, okay. The next line that we do a lot of is for instance, our Siglon. And again, it comes in a wide range and that. Um, of breaking strains. Siglon is a very thin diameter line. Um, it is a very soft and supple line compared to, for instance, a fluorocarbon line. Okay. Why a soft supple line? A soft supple line is ideal for spinning purposes. In other words, on coffee grinders, drop shotting. Very, very important when drop shotting. Ideal for um, fishing or fishing weightless flukes because it's not a heavy line it actually floats a lot better than a fluorocarbon fluorocarbon will pull your um, weightless lure if I can call it that down under the water and a lot of times you want it on the surface to zigzag on the surface so Siglon is ideal as far as a soft supple line goes and like I said it's thin why thin? Drop shotting purposes. When you're sitting on your boat there looking at your fish finder and you see the structure, you can drop it between the structure and because it's thin, the bass don't see it that easily. It's ideal for that light little presentation basically when you're actually drop shotting. I'll show you how to do that one just now. Fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is ideal for when you are Again, also pitching into structure, very important, but more importantly, it takes your lure down. So Carolina rigs, Texas rigs, a fluorocarbon line is ideal. And it's also invisible. So you can tie your Texas rig directly to it. Okay, a normal Siglon is ideal for cranking. Okay, ideal for cranking because there's a lot more stretch in it. 
it allows the bass to inhale the lure and actually turn before you actually set the hook. Very important to have a soft, supple line. A hard line like our fluorocarbon here has less stretch in it. Okay, better for bite detection at depth when you're Carolina or Texas rigging or pitching at depth. Um, so, yeah, different applications for different lines, very, very important. And of course, we've got our little pony spools, which would be the Kingfisher needle lines. They are ideal in that when it comes to Carolina rigging, you just need a little bit of extra fluorocarbon, different breaking strains depending on what it is. So you can use a standard, um, for instance, 10 or 12 pound um, fluorocarbon on a Carolina rig. And then obviously your rubbing area or your tippet area would be a heavier breaking strain. For instance, 16 pound if you want to go on a 10 pound. So it's very good in that. More abrasive resistant for the bass's teeth as well. As you know, they're, they're very, very fine. And also as it's going over the logs or stone, at the bottom, it doesn't wear as easily as the light 10 pound. So very important having a little bit of needle line on, as well as for um, your braids. If you're using a eight weave braid, fishing at depth, uh, a little bit of fluorocarbon in front of it, the bass won't see it. It also rubs a lot better than damaging, obviously your 8X, uh, um, braided lines so you won't damage your braid it'll last a lot longer um, your fluorocarbon you're only using about a meter tippet on it so yeah a lot of different reasons why that works so well now I'm just going to show you two or three knots there's only three knots that you really need to know when it comes to either braid or nylon or monofilament to join uh, as far as your bass fishing goes. Three knots, that's all you really need to know. The first is going to be a Palama knot. Okay, so show you a Palama knot, whether it be braid or monofilament, it doesn't make a difference. So, what we do is we take our braid, double it, take a swivel, for instance that little swivel there, Go through the eye of the swivel, like so. Make an overhand granny knot. And we can all do that. There's your granny knot, guys. As simple as that. Pinch the actual uh, braid or nylon. Open up the actual braid or nylon. Take your fingers through, grab the swivel, and pull tight. There we go. Cut off the tag end. There it is there. Palama knot. Done with braid. I'm going to show you how to attach a figure of eight to a lure, whether it be a floating lure, a sinking lure, crankbait, or anything along those lines. Figure of eight. Okay, very simple. Figure of eight onto a lure, you just go straight through it like that. The best way to do it, I find, is basically stick your finger in there, pinch it, wrap the tag end, which is that part, around the back once, twice, three times. Take the tag in and go back through the back part of it. Open it up, there's your figure of eight formed. Like so, remember to lubricate, slide down, pull tight, and again, just cut off <coughs> the tag end. Palama knot, figure of eight, and you're good for bass fishing.